because oh. every two hours they'd get a break. Everybody would go out in the parking lot into the cars and do their drugs. Apparently, <laughs> Damn. they had hotels next to the. It was right across the street from the airport. They had hotels. They had cops in the hotels. Oh, cameras and stuff. Did a whole nah. sting on the place. You can you can nug plug it. Okay. <laughs> Y'all know what it is, man. Hey, we're outside episode five of the Gobcast. And this time we have a very exciting guest with a very interesting story from us. We're here with my boy, Marty O'Neill. What is going on, bro? What's up, man? I'm Thank you for coming here. on, bro. Thank, Thank you. you so much, dude. Thank I appreciate you. it. Good vibes. We have a here. banger coming in today. And listen, for those of you guys who aren't familiar, Marty O'Neill a lot of you may know him from the Dope is Yola podcast, but he is a lot more and has a very interesting story that goes far beyond that. Starting out in New York, he was young and he was rapping, making <laughs> music, and he might have gotten in a little bit of trouble. And as he progressed, he built a career working and, you know, building a career with some of the most crazy, you know, top level comedians and, you know, people in the industry that many of you are familiar with. He even did time working on the Joe Rogan show, which I'm sure... Anyone watching this podcast has to know what that is. Marty's got a crazy story to share with us today, and I'm really excited to have him on. I'm really excited to have all of you guys watching this. Make sure to drop a like, and also make sure to check out the $50 ounces on Only Gas. You know the vibe. You know where to find them. I'm not going to put any links. If you don't know, you're out of luck, dude. How you been, bro? I'm great. I appreciate it. I remember when this was just an idea. It's so cool to be yep, here. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You know, I've been um I've been really excited to get this rolling for a while, and you were one of the first people I wanted to have on. I was oh, really yeah. excited to have you and Yola on. Mm -hmm. But you've always had a story that like really interested me. Uh, I remember when we first met, just doing the Yola podcast. I'd learned a couple things about you that really like piqued my interest, and I wanted to learn more. I always did, but. On the Yola podcast, obviously, it's not really the right time, you know? Yeah, yeah. But here, now it's the right I time. I want that. to learn some more about you. So. I appreciate it. And this is good timing because, you know, we're making some changes right now internally yep. and bringing on some new people to kind of give me more time to go out and push, like, my story and my yep. personal brand out there more. Fire. Yeah, I'm excited to help you do that. Fucking here on the Gobcast, yeah. man. With the whole and shout out to your audience because I've never seen anything like it from the start of the podcast. These guys just like showed you so much support and they were just banging on the door. Like I'd never seen, like you said, I've worked with so many people. Yep. Fan bases like that are unique. Yep. Rare. Yep. And when they're actually doing it for a good purpose, like we, this needs to happen. Fuck yeah. I appreciate yeah. that, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure the gang out there appreciates that too. Thank you all for being so supportive, man. We've got a banger today, but I think we should start it off by getting a little stone. I'm ready. I'm I think we should get some bong now, rips. Man. And I know you were saying that you grind your bowls a little different. I oh, it's all a couple, good. But, you know, I don't want this to make you no, hit this, my bowl style. Listen, I'm not picky whatsoever. Right here, though, we have a sob with an ash catcher and a fresh bowl for you, oh, Okay. Pat. So you can rip that bad that. boy. And we can get stoned. Now, you don't take too many bong rips, no? <laughs> yeah, I take a couple. I take a few here and there, casually. <laughs> Very casually. All yeah. right, well, I think we got a casual bong today, you know, just to this chill. monster. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's some lore behind that one. We went, to a, we went to an auction to get that at a dementia gallery. I'm not sure if you've ever been. No. It's a, a smoke shop in Woodland Hills. Shout out dementia gallery. Um, went to an auction where some dude sniped the one that I wanted to get, uh, but, uh, we got lucky. It was like a ticket system. So, you know, you just got a ticket and hope you got drawn and we got drawn like three times. So we got that bong for the sick. studio and, um, we each, you know, Eric and I got a bong that we wanted. So it ended up pretty good. Nice. But my main piece got sniped. I mean, brutal day. That's ended up right. This bad boy though. Hey, I think it's you're nice going to love me. it. Let's go. Now. Before we go any further into this, there's a question that I ask or try to ask most of my guests, and I'm going to ask you right now, because this is a very important question. This is, you know, I think like a, you can really judge a person's character off this Oh, question. God. Okay. okay? <laughs> What's your Taco Bell order? <laughs> my Taco Bell order is disappointing, first of all, because I'm vegetarian. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Listen, is it the same thing as Yola's? Because Yola posted no. a crazy ass order. No, he goes, he, he takes it away a step further with the veganism. Okay. I'm okay. all with the cheese. I like the nice, uh, I think it's the crunch wrap uh -huh. where they have like the uh, burrito with the crunch fire inside. Fire. Yeah. The beans and the cheese and the rice. Yep. Have you had the, uh, the spicy potato taco? Yes. 
Yeah. Oh, I love a potato taco. Bro. And a spicy potato. Yes. Dude, see, they have really good, like, vegetarian options yeah. there. It's locked it's true. in. So you'd say your option is your your total order is what? You get like a crunch wrap, yeah. vegan style. Yeah, yeah. Throw a couple of those nice little Cinnabons on there in the nice, side. Nice, nice. Yeah, maybe that, a little lemonade. Oh, not a Baja? I'm not, I'm not up on that. That left me speechless, dude. You're like <laughs> one of the first people I've ever met that has a Taco Bell order that doesn't involve Baja Blast. I barely ever like go through though. So I'm just like. Oh, uh, yeah, true. I guess, you know, if. Baja Blast, it's like a, it's like a real culture thing. If you're not in the Baja culture, you uh-huh. know, like you don't care about it. You Next know? time. Yeah. Next time, jump in. Baja's serious, dude. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, bro. I it's see the passion. Get. No, I'm yeah. passionate about it, dude. I remember when I was a kid, it was like, it was almost like Supreme Drops, you know, like the Baja. It was like, oh, you're talking about the flavor. Orange Pop? Um, the, what was that? Orange Pop? No, Baja? the, the Baja Blast. Like the, okay. the shit from Taco Bell. Oh, it's only at Taco Bell. Yeah, it's oh, only okay. at Taco Bell. Okay. Well, when I was younger, it was. Now you can get it at the store. But when I was younger, it was a flavor that was Taco Bell exclusive. So you had to like go to specific Taco Bell locations to get this Mountain Dew. And it was also widely regarded as the best one. And me being like a fucking 12 year old, that was a big deal. <laughs> that was a gotcha. huge ass deal. Like Mountain Dew was serious. Uh-huh. So I was fucking, I was always like, yo, we got to go to Taco Bell. Like, mom. Take me to fucking Taco Bell. And yeah. Baja. Get, like, we extra. had Mighty Taco too growing up. So that was a little What's different. That? That's like a poor man's Mighty Taco or Taco Bell. Yeah. A poor man's Taco Bell. Have you ever heard of Taco John's? No. Nah. All yeah, right. That's a poor man's is. Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's rough. Is it like, is Mighty Taco like, what, what's the menu? It's like dog food and then more dog food from oh, what I remember. Wow. You really hate this shit. Oh my God. It was gross. I kind of resented it because that's what, you know, it was gross. Is that's it still around? Had. Probably. Can we look this up? Like, <laughs> I want to see. Taco, it might be unnecessarily shutting down Marty Taco. No, no, no. Right now, I but. mean, bro, maybe it's worse. I can't imagine they improved much, you know, mm-hmm. like, oh, dude, our, it's <laughs> dog food. We got to make it better. Like no fast food place ever does that. It's true. You know, hmm? Mighty Taco. I had my first full on uh, like dumb and dumber, like horrible, like shit catastrophe moment off Taco Bell though, or Mighty, Ta- Mighty Taco back in the day. Uh huh. Cause I was vegetarian as a kid. My parents were hippies. Oh, you, you grew up like this. Yeah. Okay. But then my cousin from Detroit came down. She's like, no, Taco Bell, Mighty Taco, whatever it is. I always mix them, mix their names up. I got like a ground beef taco or something. Then we went to the mall. Oh my God. Food court. If full, you haven't like, been eating meat. <laughs> Ground beef might be the worst way to get back in. <laughs> I was like probably seven or eight and I still remember. Hey, cheers. Oh, we got Mighty Taco pulled up. Let's see this. Oh, they got, bro, is that egg in there? Oh, I hope With so. the ground beef. Oh my God. Ooh, the fish burrito. Yo, let me get, <laughs> let me get a fish burrito, please, dude. Oh, oh, so good. oh my God. Hold on. I'm going to play this. They made a trailer for it. Does this like bring back like <laughs> bad memories? Oh, Whoa, God. No, nah, none of those was. No, this isn't even that bad. Wait for the burrito to pop up. When are they going to show it? What? They just hide it? Whatever, right there. That looks way better than what I was getting back in the day. Really? Yes. No That's problem. bad. Yeah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. If that... <laughs> hey, if that... Listen, ladies and gentlemen, if that looks better than what he was getting back in the day, you really were eating dog food. Because if there's one thing we do in my hometown, it's like unhealthy, greasy, shitty food. Yep. We do yep. do that. And you're from Buffalo, yeah? Yeah, so pizza, subs, chicken wings, chicken fingers, all type of stuff. Damn. So you just had all the all the junk food, like the fire junk food, though? Yeah, because once I turned, like, once I got into sports, when I was, like, a teenager, I started uh-huh. eating meat, meat again. So I had a whole run of, like, barbecue chicken finger subs for about 10 years there. Oh, what kind of sports <laughs> you play? Basketball. Damn. Yeah, yeah. you're tall. I could, I could see you yeah. balling. I could see yeah. you balling hard. Were yeah. you good? I was pretty good. I played some D2. Damn, okay. I played ice hockey, too. You were bit, you were yeah. talented, bro. <laughs> I did football a little bit when I was younger, but only when I was like in middle school. My mm-hmm. grades were too bad; they wouldn't yeah. let me continue. 
That'll do it. That's the way it went. I played but, football on the streets, but I was obsessed with basketball. Basketball is like one of those sports that like I always thought was very cool, but like I am just not built for basketball. I'm Neither not, am I, really. I'm not a hooper. Yeah, like you could be the tallest kid in the whole district where you're yep, from, and then yep. you go up to college and you're like, you're gonna get clapped if nothing. you're not yeah. like really <laughs> locked in. Yeah, yep. like I was playing with grown men when I was 17. We had like 30, 32, 35 year old dudes on my team. Yep. So it was different. Damn. So what was it like growing up out in, in Buffalo? How was it? <laughs> it's been, it's been the foundation for the podcast. That's for damn sure. And it was, it was really, it was really interesting. We'll put it like that. It was, it was really interesting, but I'm just super grateful for my time in Buffalo and yep. the mentality that it gave me and the lessons it taught me. And it made me who I am today and gave me my work ethic for sure. And for those of you out there who aren't familiar with Marty here, who are you today? <laughs> well, today, I'm, first of all, I'm a business owner, which is something yep. I'm super proud of. And I'm a husband and a father and all that. And, and I have my own show now because I've been behind the scenes in podcasting for almost 10 years. Yep. since 2013. And I moved out here. So, yeah, co-host and producer of Dope As Usual podcast. When I'm not doing that, I'm working behind the scenes of some of your favorite commercials and TV shows that you might be watching. And, some of the biggest comedians and entertainers in the world before that through my business, Drastic Graphics. You cook, you cook, you do I've a lot. Grinding, yeah. What kind of like commercials and stuff have you done recently outside of the, the Dope as Usual podcast? Well, every year I do T-Mobile Super, Super Bowl commercials. Really? Yeah. That's sick as hell. Yeah. And then I've done like Apple, Samsung, Microsoft, like in between that I'll get calls and like for pilots for TV shows and stuff. So uh, they reach out to you primarily? Or? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. It's all direct. And there's just like a, is there like a, they just kind of know you already. They're like, oh, I, I know Marty. I know Drastic Graphics. He's been grinding, you know, and they just hit you up. Yeah. That's I sick. got, I got plugged into it without even knowing I was being plugged into it, which uh -huh. is insane because, uh, my mentor, basically, I don't really have any mentors, but yeah. somebody that has played that role in my life a, a little bit, uh, Adam Glass, he's a real, he's a Hollywood showrunner. And I didn't even know what that, I didn't know what a showrunner was yep. when I met him, but it's somebody who creates shows and runs them. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Literally like, a showrunner. Yeah. Yep. I, I thought like, oh, you run and get people things and like you're running around helping. No, bro. He's so, but one of my former clients had introduced me to him because uh, Anthony Anderson, the actor from- yep. Uh, from, you know, me, myself and Irene and Transformers, all that, he was going to start a podcast and they were basically looking for a producer. So right when I was starting dope as usual, I was also thinking I was about to be starting a second podcast also. Oh. And there was actually a third one also. Damn. So I was like positioning myself to really be a production company, yeah. which probably wouldn't have worked out because I barely been have enough crazy bandwidth. grind. Yeah. I was building out a team, but it just wasn't meant to be. Mm -hmm. So I went back and forth with Adam and went and met with Anthony. And we went for like months, two, three, four months. I was going up against these companies that were vying for this position of producer for his podcast. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't technically played that role yet. I had played a, a bunch of other behind the scenes roles, yep. but I hadn't been like executive producer. Yep. So I was having to pitch myself and all these documents and presentations and mm -hmm. game plans and for months and weeks. And then it just, he was like, eventually he's like, you know what? He just got picked up for a TV show. Podcast isn't going to happen. Oh. But I like your work ethic so much. I linked you up with my friend over here. And I'm going to, if you want, you can go phone behind the scenes for them. And that kicked off like this whole part of my career that I would have never even thought like I wanted to do. Damn. Yeah. Sometimes it's just that one connection. Yeah. You know, it and really is. It's one of those things where... <laughs> I didn't even know who I was getting on the phone with. Like I could have been my clients would put me on the phone with people all the time when they're trying to start podcasts and I wouldn't yep. charge them. I'd just sit there and give them game. I've done that to some big people yep. that are out there now. And this was just one of those calls and it ended up bouncing right back just off my work ethic. I didn't even know this was out there, but it ended up being a pilot for a show that was owned by Anheuser-Busch. Damn. So it was like a big deal. So when I went, I started, I started un realizing this as it was like happening, uh -huh. but it was like six days in a row at a uh, bank of California arena with like Shannon Sharp, Paul Pierce, Sean White, Holy shit. Anosco, all these crazy athletes. Yeah. And it, it, a that fame and, lineup. Yeah. It yeah. was, it was insane. 
the coolest thing ever. And it's just me and them. I'm the behind the scenes guy. Yep. That's awesome. And there wasn't a behind the scenes guy before. Like it mm -hmm. was, an, it's a new thing on the call sheet. So we're working with like, there's like 200, 300 people there. We got the whole arena for six days and it's just me and the athletes and learning how to film, learning my role within this giant production. Yep. And just as a camera nerd, like just geeking out, seeing how it's all done. Yeah. It's gotta be hype. It was awesome. How different is it like jumping into those, those big scale, you know, huge commercial productions? Is it like, did you adapt pretty mm -hmm. easily? Yeah. I already had so much experience at that point working with Live Nation and like all these big yep. companies through the comedians that like that level of professionalism I already had, but I was still relatively new with the camera. I had only really been going hard with the camera for like probably nine months, 10 months at that so point. So you really just knew how to present yourself and like work hard. Yeah, exactly. Damn. That's and really then, impressive. Yeah. After that, they hired me for a full month to build the website, build the social medias, post every day wow. in collaboration with the NFL, the WNBA, MLB, all these, each athlete got their own subsidiary brand from Anheuser-Busch. Yep. So I was like on those calls with them every day for like, you know, weeks and months after that. And uh, that just led to a lot more projects. Yeah. I mean, you really like, bro, you, you kind of do everything, honestly. Like it's crazy impressive. Like I got to give you your Appreciate props. That. You know, you, you do the graphics, you do the videography, you, you do like, you, you pretty much have the whole thing. Like just yeah. you, you encompass every part of production and it's pretty yeah. impressive. Like, it allows us to be a two man operation, which yep. at first we thought was like something we're trying to grow out of. Like yep. we're going to do an indie and then we'll blow up and get a big deal. Yep. And then we tried that out and it was like, no, it's actually, it really only works when it's us doing it. Yeah. When you guys, um, you were at the warehouse spot at, mm -hmm. um, where was that? What company was that? I don't remember. In Santa it doesn't Monica. really matter. Yeah. In yeah. Santa Monica. Um, I remember that. Yeah. It didn't feel quite right. It didn't feel quite we right. We were trying to get me to not, we we're trying to free up my time yep. so I could kind of do what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. but ultimately like it's just us. I had to realize like, that's not the goal. The goal is to build it up independently and just do it ourselves and build up our own team. hundred percent. How like different of a person nowadays? Cause you, you know, you have a really impressive track record nowadays, but I've heard you talk about when you were younger, you were pretty different. Yeah. Yeah. How different I mean, kind nowadays? of actually, I mean, not really. I, in some ways I'm the exact same person. Really? I was just more ignorant. Yeah. I just hadn't. I feel that I was the same exact way. Yeah. Same exact way. It's some of the most ignorant shit when I was younger. <laughs> uh, I got in a lot of trouble when I was younger as well. I mean, you guys have probably heard a lot of my stories. Yeah. You've watched my channel for a while. Uh, and you, yeah. you, you got in yeah. some trouble when you were younger as well too, right? Yeah. I mean, I avoided a lot more trouble than I got in. Nice. <laughs> nice. I feel that. You know I mean, like I had my like destroy the neighborhood phase of a couple yep. of years and yep. just try to just run it up, but I We're got pretty packages. focused pretty We're quick. Fucking hitting mailboxes, or, you know, all that All shit. the type of fucking really around. embarrassing, stupid, destructive. Awful stuff, yeah. Awful, like, as a homeowner now, the stuff we were doing is yes, horrible. dude, as someone who, like, <laughs> cares about my belongings yeah. now, I'm like, oh, my God. We, it man. got to the point that the neighborhood had a meeting. The neighborhood came together against us, <laughs> and my homeboy, that was the ringleader of this shit. They knew it was y'all? Yeah, we were the only kids in this whole neighborhood, basically. <laughs> I don't know, just two, three summers of destruction. Oh, no. And then, uh, yeah, my homie moved out. His whole family moved out. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and, uh, but then, yeah, we, you know, I, like, I was kind of going through a lot as a teenager. I got focused pretty young, like, uh, as far as, like, my dad got cancer, and he was, oh. like, real bad, and, you know, I was working real, I started working when I was like 14. Yep. And then, uh, like I played college basketball for a year, but then I just started working and dropped out and kind of got into some trouble at school and fizzled yep. out. And that's when I really got obsessed with music. Yeah. And you, um, <laughs> I remember one of the favorite, one of my favorite things you ever showed me was the picture of rapper Marty. I yeah. love that picture. How'd you get into music? You know, how'd you start? My that? dad was a musician. Really? So he's like, I've been in the studio my whole life. Okay. My dad's in the Buffalo Music Hall of Fame. You know, like he's a real musician. He's, I grew up, he was out gigging out every night, like local musician. He would talk guitar. He had a studio that he talked guitar out of our house. Like that was what he, he never worked a job. He was only a musician. 
So that was something I always admired. You know, he could he could show up anywhere and bust out his guitar, and yeah. he had that tool. Uh, but I was only, I've been obsessed with hip hop since I was nine or ten, like literally ten years old. It's like right now, Bone Thugs and Harmony lyrics, which is insane. Fire. Like it's like my room looked like serial killer, like collage. <laughs> but uh, when I was when I was like probably a senior in high school, I started mm-hmm. just recording some nonsense just to instrumentals. And I was like wanting to be in the NBA. Like I was literally obsessed with basketball and yep. I'm not that tall. I'm not that athletic. I'm not that good. I, I went and played college off of sheer hard work. Yeah. Literally I like I was the only, probably one of three freshmen on the team. One of the only white kids on the team. Frailest by far. So you always you know I mean? had like, that work ethic. When they called me out at uh, Midnight Madness, the homecoming. Yeah. The coach gave everybody nicknames. Marty, hard work, O'Neal. Literally <laughs> came out like that was it. Uh, <laughs> my sports nickname is not anything cool like that. Oh, my. Cool. Uh, yeah, now that I think about it. Like <laughs> you had a cool one, dude. You had a good one. Hard but work. When I started falling off of basketball, I got kicked off the team that my sophomore year for smoking mm-hmm. weed in the dorm. Uh, I started getting reckless and stopping. I realized I wasn't going to the NBA. Yep. And my homeboy had started kind of gassing me up, like, you should really take music seriously. I was not thinking about it at all whatsoever. But when he said it, it kind of like rung in my mind. And really overnight, I switched obsessions. I got kicked off the team. I didn't even have to get kicked off. They wanted to keep me on. I had just transferred there from like mm-hmm. a better school. They gave me all these chances. I shit on the coach. It was just... They made me do community service. I stopped doing it. I stopped going to school. But really quick, I like interned at a studio, started to teach myself how to record, Uh started like getting record deals and taking trips, like all within that time really fast. Damn. So you like, you really just, just kind of tried to overcome that, that mistake the best you could. Would you say? As far as getting kicked out of school? Yeah, like, did, did you try to kind of overcome that the best you could? Or how did that end up playing out? It ended up playing out because it would have been a waste of time. And okay. I was going after my dreams. I was like, I can't fake. I can't. I literally was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. I have to go get after it. And I was working full time. Also, I was working full time and going to school full time. Well, not You're working full time. No, 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 no. My schedule was like, uh, I was working I kept my job. I was working two days uh-huh. a week and going to school full time and playing basketball Fuck. in college while commuting. Dude. So like it's pretty I, much three jobs. It was a lot. So I just um I just stopped going to school and then I just like started working full time. But even then I also started kind of like hanging out really heavy then too. Cause we moved we moved a lot. That was the other variable. Like I grew up mm. kind of all over the area. Did you move like around the the same state in new york or did you just yeah all around the buffalo that? area all oh, different okay. parts of buffalo though like i feel at home all over like as far as the whole area goes but when i was a teacher or a teenager we moved to lackawanna which is like touches the south side of buffalo and it's mm-hmm. its own little thing but it's like a notorious little city Damn, why, why is it notorious? Like, what's the... It's just known for being... Just rough? Grimy, like, the grimy... Oh, little, that's... Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Like, I love Lackawanna, like... And I moved there as, like, a 15 or 16-year-old. Would you say when you were younger, you contributed to the grime in, in that city? By the time I hit Lackawanna, I had already fully dumbed out. I was already, like, trying to, like, not do stupid shit anymore. Nice, nice. <laughs> Nice. I, I, I sometimes I think about that myself. I'm like, damn, bro. I kind of brought down property values when I was young. Mm. Like I was a menace. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. I wouldn't say I, when I was there. That was a great thing because just all my homeboys, every everybody in my life, uh-huh. basically had some their own version of some wild shit going on. Damn. Were you like how wild were you compared to most of your homies? not as wild i'm i was like super focused i mean you're talking about my adopted younger brother went down for bank robbery what like uh a lot of my homeboys were doing like like really heavy duty serious shit that came along with like you know a really serious lifestyle so i was i was really i was in and around all that shit a lot but i was also super focused 
that I've always been that way. Like how I'm on a mission, how I work, I'm up every seven days a week at five. Like that's been me. Well, not that psychotic, but I've been on a mission since I realized like I can't be normal. Yeah. I can't have a, an average lifestyle. But also the only way I really could see that happening was some like Dr. Dre, huge record deal. I was, I, I like was knew that it was going to come at a cost also. Yep. So <laughs> do you remember the point where you stopped doing the music stuff? Yeah. Yeah. It was when I moved out here. Really? Because I, I moved out here through a record deal basically. Okay. So I had like, I took it all the way as far as like the eight mile story out of your hometown. Mm -hmm. I, f I took it all the way. And when was that? How long ago? Was 2013. That? Okay. So 2000, I graduated high school in 2004. Uh, kind of, I set off on my mission in 2005, you know? So, that's, so I really put my mind to it probably around 2005. I put the, put that ba basketball kind of work ethic into the music, started recording heavy, started, you know, it's not cheap, starting to put all my money in the studio and the beats and all that. Started releasing mixtapes, going down to New York City, coming back with 5,000 CDs, inserts, doing all that, putting them in all the stores. This is even before MySpace, as MySpace is kind of happening. And then I ran with it all the way until 2013. It kind of culminated, I remember, in this like, it wasn't a going away party, but it kind of felt like it. My homeboys were having this little concert and uh, everybody kind of was like patting me on the back and shit. They all knew it was about to happen. And then we packed up all our stuff and moved out here. We had a Airbnb. Damn. And even for the first couple months of being out here, I was mm -hmm. fully still on my music grind. Cause I was trying to get a deal with Dr. Dre. <laughs> and that was my goal the whole time. When I moved out here, I became really good friends with his son. Oh, that's how'd you meet him? I saw him in a magazine, the OC Weekly had okay. him uh, on the cover and him and Easy es son. And they had like a studio that they were affiliated with down in Orange County. Mm -hmm. So once I realized that, I booked out a block of time and went down there and recorded. And the dude that was running the studio, the second time I came back, he had Curtis come. And then Curtis came in and pulled me out of the studio and we talked and started vibing. And then me and him just became like really good friends. After that, I started to go record in his house for couple of weeks and months after that and kind of work with him, you know, helping him out like how I do. I had been, mind you, I've been hustling graphics this whole time. Yeah, Drastic yeah. graphics was a thing that I was doing on the side mm -hmm. and like to support all my music stuff and my homeboys, like music projects and stuff. So you were going hard. Like you had multiple different like hustles going at the same time. Yeah. I was working a job, all that type of stuff that I hated. And um, <laughs> yep. yeah, then when I got out here, <laughs> It was Ro listening to Rogan's podcast really helped me kind of mm -hmm. separate because like I realized about two years before we moved, like I had a daughter. I had a yep. daughter when I was 20 and I've been with Damn. April ever since. Like the day I've been with April ever since the day I met her. You know? wow. <laughs> and I had a daughter really young. And how was, was really, that? It was, it was very, very, it's why we're sitting here today. It was very, very, very necessary and just something I... I'm really grateful it happened when it did because really gave me focus. You say she kind of, she kind of like straightened you out. She fueled my fire. Nice. For sure. Like I wouldn't have been able to do it without her. Look what we have here. Oh, <laughs> we have your taco. Oh, yo, good shit. Here Appreciate that. Oh, wow. Look you know what? <laughs> When's the last time you had a Baja Blast? This is it? Yeah. If, I've never if had it. Take that. Take that Baja Blast. Okay. You never had one? No. Are you serious? What? First time Baja Blast right here. Oh. All right. So in this bag, um, let's check the receipt. <laughs> what do we got here? We got two spicy potato soft tacos. We got two um, bean chalupa Supremes. Um, and then we have the drinks. So does that Thanks, sound like guys. a good order nice. to you? Yeah. Cool little sketch. We'll see. Hell yeah. Um, so, I mean, you don't have to have Taco Bell, but I mean, whatever you want to have. Okay, just that's delightful. That I like that. Yeah. You that's know? like a nice. Whatever you want to have. Uh, we have Taco Bell here. You know? Sick. Your order is here. Uh, there, is this an official sponsor? It should be if it's not. 
Yeah, it should be for sure. But uh, we just <laughs> order it every time. Right. We just uh, <laughs> well, we haven't done it every time. Sometimes I get high and then I forget to do it. But this time I was like, yeah, I can't keep forgetting. Yeah, I have to lock it. We have to ask Martin. Nice. So, <laughs> oh yeah, I, I I got you right. But um, damn, having having a kid at twenty is I can't imagine like yeah, it was really weird because like I got with April. I was mm-hmm. with her for a month. Then my brother went to jail. Oh. And up until then, me and him were like, that was my all time best friend. I always, I mean, since we were kids, like my all time best friend. So then that was just a huge, like, we, you know, thing to go through with her that whole time. Yeah. My dad was really sick. He was sick for like eight years, really bad. Oh. And then, uh, yeah, my brother Jamal went to jail. And by the time he came out of jail, I really, I like, we had a house, we had a car. My daughter was like two. And I was pushing. I was like, I had fallen back from a lot of my homeboys. I mean, mm-hmm. just hanging out. I mean, it's, we're in, it's like a legit. Before people were like hanging out in the trap, like we were hanging out in the trap house in the project and shit. Like yeah. it was, there was heavy activities going down. And then when he came out, I had my house and everything, and I had kind of really separated myself from a lot of my friends. Yeah. And it was Rogan's podcast. Rogan's podcast had just came out. Mm-hmm. Really. And I was the first episodes before it was even on YouTube. I started listening to that and like really connecting with him and all his friends. And you ended up like producing for Rogan or uh, you were involved with the Joe Rogan mm-hmm. podcast, which is crazy. Like, more that's so, a- more so his live comedy tours and touring, okay. but also okay. the podcast lightly too. That's sick. Yeah. That's sick. And that, well, my music run really ended when I kind of got, my foot in the door with podcasting, which was uh-huh. through his friends. So that was a good transition for you yeah. to, to kind of really get into a new industry. Yeah, exactly. Cause it, I mean, I've always been j- just as into comedy as I have been into music and basketball. It's like a parallel mm-hmm. passion for mine. Yeah. Comedy's and awesome. I had been listening to podcasts since I first came out. So when I got my opportunity in that, I was like, what am I doing here? What am I going to like stand out in Hollywood Boulevard and pitch my mixtapes? Like, I had this deal with DJ Ski. It didn't yep. really go anywhere. I was like, my rent just went up four or five times than what it was. Fuck. And I was like needing to make something happen. Mm-hmm. So I just shifted gears and uh, started working with some of Rogan's friends and podcasts and Brian Cowan and Brendan Shaw, Fire and the Kid. Worked with them for a couple of years and then it started growing from there with Theo and all the other, started making connections and weaving a web that led back to Rogan one night on Christmas Eve. Actually, we like locked in officially. Cause he had been kind of, I'd been doing some like fan art for him and stuff. And mm-hmm. he had been hearing about me from his friends now. Yeah. And like, then he, I pitched him and he locked in for like a long-term deal. It was like That's, Christmas Eve. I was walking around the mall. Bro, it's got to feel so good. I, <laughs> and it was the first show, Joey Diaz and Joe Rogan live in Buffalo. So oh. the first poster that wow. I did was for him live in Buffalo. That's amazing. Actually. The first show. Yeah. Wow. That's sick as hell. And then it kicked off. I, I put targeted advertising into mm-hmm. live comedy. Nobody was really doing that before. Mm-hmm. And I figured out how to do, get really good at running the targeted ads in each city. I just kept figuring out new ways to try to like give value to my clients. It was like, it was like start off with t-shirt designs. Yep. Then like thumbnails for every episode. Yep. And then website design and like e-commerce. Yep. And then video editing and then learn on the, the video and then the targeted ad. So I kept like layering on all these things. So that just turned into a full-time job between all the comedians and their shows and their episodes. And I got my office and my team and I was yep. fully doing that when I reached out to Yola. Damn. And are you like, are you self-taught on a lot of these skills that you have? Yeah, totally. I mean, I have a degree in graphic design, but uh-huh. I'm fully self-taught. Yeah. That's a, um... You know, that's, that's just crazy impressive, you know, being able to teach yourself that many different avenues of doing shit. Like, you know, I can edit a video and like make a thumbnail, but like, I can't do all that crazy stuff that you do. Like, that's- like I've seen like, you know, some of the stuff you've posted and like just the way you edit Yola's podcast, it's, it's fire, mm-hmm. you know, it's great. You. So appreciate that. Props to you, dude. You Thank kill you. it. You kill it. Um, and I'm this year, I've been saying it for a while, but. I've needed to rearrange my life to make it happen, but I'm going to be putting out a course and a coaching program to really simplify it because I think it is all one big muscle yep. that is like, takes so much time and there's so much like, information in all different places. I want to like, this is what I do. 
this is the things that I do most often mm -hmm. across all these different categories. Like when we did TED Talk, that's kind of what my point of the TED Talk was, was like the creative muscle extends to all these different things. Yep. And if you can be like a Swiss army knife, then you can add value in a variety of different ways to try to make money, you know, and have a backup plans for yourself. The TED Talk was crazy as hell, by the way. Like, yeah. how, how did that come about? Started with, uh, you know who Gillian Wallow? I don't know. A million that? dollars worth of game. They're a really big podcast. They're, I don't think I've heard of that podcast. They're a big hip hop podcast. They're okay. Really, like, they get all the big rappers on. Okay. But Gilly, he's from Philly. He's one of the he's a legendary rapper from uh, back in the day. And then his cousin Wallow, who did 20 years when Wallow got out. Gilly was really big on Instagram. They came together and they're like putting out a bunch of Instagram content. Wallow's like a really motivational kind of figure. Bye. And then um, they, Wallow kind of blew up through TED Talk. He did a, a TED Talk when he got out called I Forgave My Brother's Killer. And it kind of launched him as like an online personality. Uh, I, they started doing their own indie podcast. I thought it was really great. I reached out to him. I got on the phone. I gave him a consultation. And then I, I did him a little tutorial video, mm -hmm. sent it over to him. A couple of weeks, months later, they ended up signing him with Barstool and their shit took off like Damn. huge. But Wallow circled around behind the scenes and the dude that linked him with TED Talk, this dude, Dracori, mm -hmm. he was like, hey, you should have this dude on. So then Dracori reached out to me and asked me to be on TED Talk in Florida. And I was like, can we do it when you guys come to LA? And he was like, sure. And then I was like, well, why don't we do it as a, why don't, let me do it with Thomas. Mm -hmm. so we can do it as a duo that's which has only been done a handful of times before never yep. never by a podcast so that's how it came together and then the, all the way the whole story all the way through is really interesting because we ended we rewrote our whole speech three days before really yes damn and i'm i'm glad we did but it was insanely it was one it was probably one of the most stressful things i've ever done in life by far how long was the uh the speech do you remember 18 how many minutes it couldn't be over 18. Oh. So, and it's not just a speech. So you had to just perfect it. You had to like, yeah, you can't just write random shit. You got yeah. to structure it in a it's way. A, it's about, a, it has to be about one single idea. Okay. So it's like the way they explain it is you have one, you're an expert at one particular, one individual idea, only one idea That's that you dope. need to impart on the audience Okay. that pertains to the theme of the evening. So there was a bunch of speakers there and there was a mm -hmm. theme everybody had to go to which was what skills does it take to start from scratch in the digital age that's a really interesting topic so it's like not just going out necessarily talking about your life story yep. or whatever which some people did and fuck that but they but didn't still cool. Still cool. they didn't get posted <laughs> yeah you got to follow the theme yep in order for it to really work so i took the ted master class mm -hmm. i was like four or five days out i was like might as well take this and then I watched it. It was like an online course, basically. I'm like, oh my God, like our speech is wrong. Oh. I'm not, the, we didn't take the right approach at all. So we needed to recraft our speech to go make it make sense for the topic, mm -hmm. which we did. But that was psychotic and it made it even more difficult because we're going back and forth. So oh. we have to write it in a way that is like. Do you have to like memorize it or were you able yes. to? Yes. Oh. Well, Ideally, so here's what I, here's my thought. Okay. Usually for a TED talk, they have like a podium and mm -hmm. they kind of sit there and read their speech. Yep. So I had it all written, but I was also memorizing it as much as I possibly could right up till we left. Damn. It was me in my closet recording it just like I used to do music, recording it into my MacBook, listening to it back, record a little, listen to it back. Just repetition. That's how you memorize shit right there. That's yeah. a crazy method. I used to be able to memorize songs before I was done writing them by doing Damn. that. As you're writing, you just record them to the MacBook and then you're playing it back, playing it back, playing it back. Eventually you got it. That's but fire. When we got there, the setup wasn't what we thought it was going to be. Uh huh. And it was my fault for not really truly confirming all this. But first of all, there was only one mic. Okay. We thought we were going to both have lav mics. We did for the purposes of the video, but for the purposes of the auditorium, there was only one mic. Oh, that's cooked. <laughs> so we realized that when we got there and we're mm -hmm. like, okay, we're going to have to like pass back and forth the mic somehow during the speech because 
the speech goes back and forth. Yep. There's some parts where he's supposed to like chime in on my speech, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. So anyway, you just got to stand like right next to each other. <laughs> uh, and mind you also, we want to be good because we don't want to ever be looked at as like the fucking stoners came out here and yeah. remember their shit. We're, yeah. we're on behalf of the community at Ted talk. Yeah. You're essentially under more pressure to, to yeah. really kill it. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So they ended up moving us to the last performance of the night. Mm. but they didn't we didn't really know that okay so we were just because most of the people there a lot of the people in the auditorium were there to see us Mm -hmm. and i think they realized that if we would have went on early it might have cleared out after we left Mm -hmm. so they pushed us to the end but they didn't really truly communicate that so we were just sitting around the hallways tents with fans coming up to us trying to memorize the speech still with our cue cards and shit (laughs) like for like two to three hours maybe even more like in the backstage, not even backstage, just in the outside of the stage. Just so, in the fucking hall. <laughs> and then there wasn't really, the other variable was there wasn't a podium. Mm-hmm. I thought I wanted to deliver it verbatim. I didn't like want to almost say what I wrote. Like I wrote yeah. it exactly how I wanted to say it. So I, want, I thought I was going to be able to just put it at a podium and read it off and glance up. But not only wasn't there a podium, but there was one old school stage light beaming, blinding you directly oh. in your face. <laughs> <laughs> like you're like a like one of those like ballerina shows where they just exactly. have the light beaming down. And and <laughs> it's not above me. It's right here. Oh, God. So I realized that only because they asked me to introduce like the dude that was I'm seeing. He had to leave. And the, mm-hmm. the dude was like, could you introduce some of the people? So I walk out on the stage and everybody's goes nuts thinking we're about to come on but i just i'm introducing the oh. next person but then i realize oh i'm blinded up here i can't i can't even see my cue cards really uh uh-huh. <laughs> so then like i introduced a couple more people realized i was going to be oh. fully blind out there thomas had it a little <laughs> bit better memorized than i did but uh yeah then we went out there and we just went for it and we were super nervous, but we did it. And yeah, I had watched it and you guys killed it. You thank guys really you. killed it. Yeah. But I mean, um oh, I couldn't imagine just being blinded and like just can't see. Imagine just this turned up to like all 10 the way, yeah, like the sun. Right on it me. was like one of the, it was like the <laughs> when we're on set for the commercials, there's a certain light that they use that mm-hmm. re- replicates the sun. Oh my so God. if we're doing a, a shoot that's gonna extend into the nighttime and they need to have mm-hmm. the light consistent. They boom that thing and block out the real sun. Oh, uh, it was like that. <laughs> How much do you think that light costs? Hundreds of thousands. It looks like a tank. It looks oh. like an army tank. Bro, we should get one one day. <laughs> Finance it. Just borrow it. Yeah, that's what they do. Oh, that's, th- that's what they do. Uh, How much you think it is to borrow it? What I didn't realize is that when they film a commercial, mm-hmm. the whole thing is put together the days before. Every different department mm-hmm. is a guy like me. Or a company that does the art department, the lighting, the gaffers, the grips, the camera team, the couple hundred people, but they get assembled and they come together. So that's how they do it. They'll rent a neighborhood. A lot of the uh, shoots that we do, they block out, they take the whole neighborhood. All the streets are lined with these tanks and all production crew and uh, security and stuff. And they go in and they rent people's houses out in their driveways and their garages. People's garages are just craft services and like, you know, do you know how much money they pay to do that? This, these are millions of dollars to operate like commercials we're talking about. Oh, but do you know how much like the, like a homeowner would get? Oh, I don't know. I never asked, but they all seem really happy. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a <laughs> they lot. They chill out in the driveway. They'll be sitting there with their dog. Like, 10? Uh, oh, a lot. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 10k bro you could do whatever you could smash my window like i don't care they come in they'll fully replace the grass fully replace all the flowers replace everything the doors like they'll put it back but your house is different (laughs) hell yeah bro free remodel (laughs) dude hell yeah so light it on fire while you're at it bro like burn out the kitchen a little bit let me get a kitchen right but shout out to ted talk for posting it and for putting us out there we really Uh appreciate it and that for our first live show ever like the adversity we went through was perfect because now yeah. we're not scared of anything like literally yeah i mean that was fucking awesome that yeah was that was a big milestone something i was really proud of put that put that up on the board so working on so many like commercials and stuff and and tv shows have you ever been like an extra on one have you ever just like real quick and it's no the oh the only time i've 
funny one. Okay. Is in one of the first Dope is Yola videos. Okay. <laughs> I'm in one of, I think it might be the first or the second video on Yola's channel. I'm really? I'm in the background because I met him way back then. Oh. I met him back in 2014. That's so funny, actually. I got I to gotta find that later. Yeah. So I am an extra. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it was one of the first weed influencer parties ever. I didn't even know it, but uh, Dre son Curtis, my friend, mm -hmm. he asked me to go on his behalf because he was going somewhere. Can you go to this party for me? It was at this mansion. And I went, that's where I met Trent. Mm -hmm. He was the bong doctor back then. Oh, really? In glass. Okay. And uh, it was his party. And like, that's where I met Thomas for the first time. Damn, Trent was throwing a banger, huh? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, fucking take that shit, dude. For sure. That's all you. Uh, the Baja, have you tried it? Oh, this is delicious. This is like a nice... Dude. Tastes like a popsicle. I'm telling you. It's just... It's horrible for you. Yeah. Just don't think about that part. Yeah, no, I'm not. You know? <laughs> a flavor. So, I, I like to ask everyone this, you know, of course, because of my history, but uh, do you have a... Or I guess, what is your history with, with drug use? I've just been heavy on the reefer since about 19... I've never really done, I've never done drugs. You never experimented with no, anything else? No, I you like, always just smoked I tried weed? some bootleg Molly back in the day once or twice. Okay. Never really hit, nothing happened. Barely like, how was it felt bootleg? It. Like what? I just assumed it was bootleg because it didn't work. Ah, okay. What was it? Like, was it just pills they gave you? Or? It was like some powder. I just put on my tongue basically. Oh yeah. It, it tasted disgusting. I don't, it was like my homeboy. I, I had no idea. I don't know. Yeah. I was smoking blunts and shit back then. Like heavy. That's all I really cared about. Hell yeah. Damn, so you just, you just kept it the weed. That's the best but thing to do. But I was like uh, completely straight edge till I was like 19. So I quit basketball. I got my first, I bought my first dime sack when I was in the dorm room. My second, my sophomore year. Uh -huh. it, was a, it was a wrap from that. Because <laughs> I got blackout drunk. One of the only times I've ever been truly blackout drunk, mm -hmm. really bad blackout drunk, was in the dorms at that time. And I was smoking all in the dorm and shit. We just had this horrible night from hell destroyed everything smoked oh. out the dorm blackout drunk that's what led to me getting kicked off the team oh what i mean you had to get in other trouble besides getting kicked off the team for that no yeah i had to do community service and how much that, community service do you remember a lot oh and then i just dropped out i did the community service then yep. quit school dude at that point i don't blame you man the community service sucks yeah. i've done a lot too i was in the kitchen and like it was so embarrassing yep Everybody, like, what are you in for? Basically, walking up and I'm scrubbing the tables and shit. Yep. Dude, I remember I had, um, I had 150 hours, like, the most recent one I had, like, four years ago. And then when I was younger, I had, like, another 100 hours when I was on probation again. Mm. Yeah. So brutal. No, I always, like, uh, kind of turned my nose. Like, a lot of my homeboys were selling drugs, but we didn't ever do them. Mm-hmm at all that's the way to do it yeah that's the best way to do it you know mm -hmm. sell drugs finesse your community service i didn't do all my hours honestly you know <laughs> yeah. take some of them <laughs> there was, yeah i can't talk about that can't talk about that uh, i got four more years statue of limitations and then i can talk mm. about it. <laughs> okay but yeah no it's something i'm i'm proud of i never really i've been that's what weed ever since I started, though. No, that's that's dope. That's good shit. That's how everyone watching this should be. You should learn from Marty here. Just stick to the weed, man. Alcohol sucks. Psychedelic. I mean, all right, shrooms are okay, but like not really. Still, just stick to the weed. Mm -hmm. You know, I've only Everything had one. Can fuck off. One good shroom trip. I did it on the show one time. I've only done shrooms like two or three times. Damn. So you're one for three on good ones. One one good, an awesome one. One horrible one, just because I was on the show and trying uh -huh. to keep it together. And then just kind of a dud. Oh, that's brutal. <laughs> that's brutal. I couldn't imagine just being on the show, like tweaking off the shrooms. How, how, how big was the dose that you had like a, like a bad trip? It was just like a caramel, like maybe a third to a half of a caramel. And it was so good. Oh, it was like a delicious, soft caramel. It was, I didn't even plan on you? taking it. Like I just ate it like a piece of candy kind of as the show was starting. Cause Josh gave, Josh Wolf gave it to me. Oh, but Thomas it took way more. I've heard I've heard good <laughs> stories about Josh Wolf. I wanna I wanna meet that guy. Yeah, I love Josh. Sure. I've heard Yola's told me a few times. He's like, you gotta meet this dude. Yeah. I've of all the you. people in the entertainment business, Josh is one of my favorite. Is he a just a chill guy? 
Yeah, he's I love that. Love silly that. and goofy, and he is who he appears to be. Like Josh is Josh. No Sounds like my kind him. of dude. And he's somebody that'll give you good advice, and he actually cares about you and your life, and he'll follow up and see how you're doing. Josh is great. Hey, Josh Wolf, man, come on the show. And his son time. Jake is great too, and they're on they're on the road together now. They're, oh, they're on tour together. As, doing like a comedy tour. Yeah, that's sick. They do a podcast together. So shout out to the Wolves. That's sick. Yeah, comedy is tough too. You gotta like gotta be on the spot with it you know yeah like it's it's interesting it's i've it's interesting to see how it completely has shifted and since i started working in it and it's really different now how has it shifted well the comedy universe was built around rogan at least in la for a long time uh-huh in the comedy store and the pandemic really ended all that and his yeah he had got his deal with spotify and he moved on to texas and that really kind of ended the 2000s golden age of la comedy i feel like <clears throat> in some ways so is Rogan kind of like the center of comedy right now? I think he definitely was. I mean, like, if you think about his influence, it's almost undeniable. He's like the sun with comedy orbiting around him in podcasting mm-hmm. just because of his, especially because the UFC grew with Rogan. It was at the same time, Conor McGregor, the UFC, Rogan, it was all like fueling each other up to the point of him becoming like the biggest crossover show in the world. Yeah. That happened over like, five years or whatever it was because there was a whole stretch before that where it was just like our show where it was him and his homie chilling smoking weed and like yeah it was you know fucking vibing before now it's like a (laughs) show like the most political biggest people in the world go on you know but uh mexican ot just went on too so that was pretty cool oh that's fire (laughs) yeah i've heard um good things about him too you guys just had him on too right yeah he was great he was that was one of the funnest episodes we've done do you have any particular like favorite all-time guests besides those two that you just mentioned yeah they're all really special to me like any, every guest I, is great every episode on. is special to me every, every episode i've never like phoned it in like yeah they're all bangers to me i've never felt like oh i don't feel good turning this one in oh 100 percent. yeah like we really really try to dial in the guests that we're gonna make for great episodes regardless if youtube's gonna like it or not like that's you know but there's some that were huge milestones for me, like uh, Benny the Butcher episode was huge for me, just coming out of, that was just huge for Buffalo. Yeah. Uh, the Will Sasso episode was huge for me just because he's one of my favorite comedians that this whole stretch that I'm talking about, he was like the biggest guest on all the shows I was working on. And Mario Lopez, like Matt Barnes, I was chopping up clips this morning. I was talking to Matt Barnes about him giving his heartfelt thoughts about Kobe or like, People just steal a brand. People I grew up watching, like it's wild. It's so cool to be able to sit there with Yola and just do this. Just and, create some dope shit. Yeah, and then take it and be able to do my thing with it and get really creative. I've been editing all the dope as Yola videos up until this point, also, which is ridiculous. Dude, you've been going hard. So we're that's ending now. Starting this month, starting this next month is going to be the first month where I'm not doing that anymore. Mm-hmm. And you're jumping into your own content, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Fire. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. So, yeah, I'm going to be on Twitch. I'm going to be putting out my course. I'm going to be streaming. Like, I want to stream every day, honestly. Like, now that I have my setup and know what I'm doing and I yep. know I'm going to have the time, like, I really want to do it with purpose to, like, do my own thing and have my own, like, thing going, but also to just teach people and to have it be a really clean, cohesive, just, there's not, I don't know anybody with my experience like in this lane. So I feel like I have a unique voice. I just want to put out my experience. Yeah. I mean, you have like, you just have a very interesting, like, like story, like the, the amount of experience you have throughout the industry, like working on so many different sides, you know, of, of media, whether it's like commercials. I mean, you've done TV, you've done podcasts. It's crazy. Yeah. It should be inspiring because anybody can do that. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Do you feel like you're, you're proof of that? Yeah. That's why I like to call it out so much. Yeah. Because my, I keep like changing. Like I put all my eggs into this basket and then I let that ride for a couple of years. That was a big chapter. And then I said, okay, I'm going to start over and get into this and then into this. Like you can't, I yeah. always try to stress that because people are like, okay, I'm this. Yeah. I see that a lot. People get stuck on like one thing, but yeah. like you can switch what you're doing. It's supposed you to know? keep leveling up and you can't be afraid. That's why I'm not afraid to make this leap now. Like yep. I just feel yep. it in my gut. Like this is what I should be doing. And I just keep following that and I trust that it's going to keep un- unraveling for me. 
fire. You should do some videos too with the with the Twitch streams. Yeah. You should draw some videos. That'd be heat. Mm -hmm. I want to see the Marty vlog. Yeah. I would love to do that. I mean, I'm a videographer. If I have uh huh, all I need is time and it'll just start cranking out. Like my favorite thing to do is make social media content. Like when we um when we took the show back over and I, I took all over everything again, I was like, we're posting every day. That's how we need to crank the momentum back up. And I just started posting every day on every channel. And that was like a cool little Pepsi challenge to see how the content like performed on different channels and like which ones grew fast or not. But that's when I really real, like realized this is my passion. This is what yep. I really love to do because it's a combination of everything. Mm -hmm. It's the videography, the photography, the editing, the music, the mixing, the audio, the effects. They all come together in the social media stuff. Yep. And you get rewarded with the views and people saying like, oh, I enjoyed this. You know, I fuck with this. Yeah, thing, exactly. You know? it's, like, it's something I don't even we don't get paid for. Mm -hmm. But People enjoy it. It pushes the brand forward. It increases the show's overall reach. Yep. And yep. that's just how it works. That's worth it. Yeah. You know, that's worth it. But that's, I mean, it's a huge thing. It's something we do every day. So it's just for like, I'm literally sitting there like, what's going to make people laugh? What's yep. going to. And then sometimes some of them have just gone so stupid viral recently mm -hmm. that I couldn't have even anticipated to the point that like. They're getting full articles written about the clips. We never yep. foresaw anything like that ever. It's happening. so different now, dude. Like, who knows where we're gonna be in like five years with with how media looks because these shorts are just changing the game. I mean, yeah, articles being written about shorts. Weird. Like, never could have seen that. Real happening. news outlets are writing articles about shorts. USA Today, People, the New mm -hmm. York Post, mm -hmm. Complex, like not like a, not just one clip. You this happened. Yeah, like these four are or five real. Times. These are real like. You know, I mean, US, USA Today, for example, that's a real news outlet, you know? Like, <laughs> so every time we do stuff like that, it's just stamps for us. You know, we're, we're the indie, like, underground show that's, at least in my eyes, and the people that kind of might be looking down at us, like, mm -hmm. you know, we're cool with that. We're, I'm fine with a slow, steady, organic incline. Because yeah. I work with people that, phew, they got shot up to the top real quick, and then it didn't really last yeah they weren't really 100%. able to maintain that it's yep. one thing to get up where you want to be it's a whole nother thing to be able to maintain that and keep it going up yeah you you know a, a slow and steady progression i think is always king yeah you know as long as you always just are able to maintain your current position and like you're always working towards getting better like yeah. you will you know and one thing i really we both just cherish is that like the respect of the audience and not mm -hmm. ever doing any type of fuck shit that people aren't going to respect because mm -hmm. people will do anything, but that's something that we really are. We're not willing to sacrifice and giving these platforms what they want. You know, that's why we're starting our own site so we can post what we want there and yep. then give YouTube what it wants, whatever that's going to be. And shout out to Spotify, do our thing on there. We're going to another Spotify event next week at headquarters. I'm really excited about it. They keep inviting us out to these events and Spotify's like dope. showing us love. Like, Thank you. Like that feels, mm -hmm. we put so much work into this to go against the grain. When we have a, it's a motivational show. It's what we always say. It's a motivational comedy podcast. So when YouTube's suggesting and recommending like these gore, god awful, like horrible videos on my, yeah, to me, bro, they aren't even age restricted. Mm -hmm. And then they age restrict our most like, and it annoys me because it's like we're watering down the show in yeah. terms of like, we're always thinking about, walking on eggshells with the content of the show and then they yes. restrict it anyway. So it's just, it's, it's so cooked, man. You know, you, you can make content that genuinely, you know, you filter so much out that like it should be, um, ad friendly and everything, but they just, they age restrict it and age restriction wouldn't even be a bad thing if they still recommended it. Yeah. You know, it shouldn't just kill the video totally. No, it shouldn't. It, As it somebody with kids, should. I feel like, yeah, YouTube kids is a thing and should be its own thing. Mm -hmm. and YouTube adults, people should just kind of be treated equally and fairly because yes. that's not the case. Cause it's all, it is literally also about like who, you know, there's a, that's a huge factor. I've known people on the brink of quitting YouTube and they meet the right person and now they're getting millions of views. It's kind of like a political thing and million percent. So that's why I don't like relying on it. When I got into this, I was like, I don't like our like, uh, you know, overall mood to be affected by you freaking YouTube, this faceless mm -hmm. thing all the time. Like, that's why I'm just a big proponent of no matter what you do, bring people back to your own thing. Yeah. I've always been like that. When first thing I did when I met Thomas was start a brand new dopezola.com. 
with the community, with the, all that. I implemented that right away. We need to be uploading our videos here. And then they deleted his channel. <laughs> you know, I, we, well, we got it back, but I was like, case in point. <laughs> how scary was that? It was pretty, you know, that was before the podcast started, right before the podcast wow. started. Wow. So that was probably so that oh, whole man. year I had just been focusing on building up the dope Zola brand mm -hmm. through the editing, the videos, shooting the videos, the website, the branding, all that type of stuff I was doing for the comedians. I implemented with Thomas mm -hmm. and then, yeah, they deleted it the night before we hit a million. Oh, and, uh, I got right on the phone with them with Google, like the next day and went back and forth. I played nice with them for a couple of days and then I went in on them a little bit and then they turned the channel back on. Dang. <laughs> How'd you get on the phone with Google? I just literally, I started at the customer support, whatever. And just on behalf of my client <laughs> type of shit. Fire. <laughs> Fire. No, nah, that's good. And it, I had just had him made. I made him a plaque. Uh huh. The can't stop the old plaque. One million subscribers. It was being made when they deleted the channel. No. It was just more. So when it came in, like, you know, it was just bittersweet. It was like, God, then we got it, it back. Stupid little games we play, but fucking YouTube, man. I remember there was a period where I was getting a lot of strikes too, but I never lost the channel. That's got to be terrifying. Yeah. It's, it's, it was really nice when we like, it's nice to be able to know what you're going to make every month. And like when you're on their good side, they definitely favor you more overall, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's whatever. We can only water down the show so much. So we're going to yep. just like dope as usual, unrestricted. We'll be on the website coming soon. And We'll see what happens with YouTube. Yeah. The main thing YouTube's got, as far as I'm concerned right now, is the, the live chat and the premiere. I'm trying to get YouTube Spotify to implement good features. that. Yeah, that's not like, you don't, it's not, it's hard to implement that. Mm -hmm. as, as simple as it seems. Damn, Spotify having chat and stuff would change the game. I mean, you have to start like editing your profile and like actually having a username yeah, and stuff. Right? Like, damn. It was funny because we suggested like likes, comments, mm -hmm. premieres, like those functionalities. Like, are we actually trying to compete with YouTube? This is mm -hmm. what we need. And uh, it like they seem receptive to it. So we'll see. They're, they've they've implemented so many things that we've asked them to. It's really ridiculous. yeah. Damn, They're that's great. awesome. We got to get on Spotify. So yeah, we're going to this meeting coming up, and I'm gonna bring it up again. So hopefully that that'd be such a game changer. Yeah, that would, that would really, wow. It would turn into a whole social media platform. It's uncensored. You can put mm -hmm. any links you want. It's monetized. It's audio. It's video. You know how YouTube, you got to have YouTube premium to be able to lock your phone and keep listening, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't on Spotify. Mm -hmm. So you can watch video. We're, we're one of the first shows on Spotify with video and lock it and keep playing it for, without having to pay for that. So that's Dang. better than YouTube. Uh, to me, that's the one platform that can rival eventually YouTube and long form video on so some level in podcasting. Listeners don't have to have Spotify premium to listen to your, your podcast on there. That's no. sick. No, you will get ads and you will be supporting the show. Yeah. Also, they do like, hey, this is Thomas. Listen to Dope Usual every Monday. They have those ads running for us too. Just to free users. We get like, we got like 3 million impressions each month on uh, really? Spotify. They're Holy running shit. Um, banners for us on people's homepages. They promote big guest episodes. Dude, shout out Spotify, man. That's right. awesome. Like, Promoting a cannabis show, a motivational comedy cannabis show. Yeah, exactly. You That's know, awesome. people thought Rogan was the weed dude. He was the weed dude when he came in. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. hundred percent. Like, I then, remember when Elon smoked the joint on right? the show and that was the craziest thing ever. Yeah. We're like, weed's not going to be the star of the show, but by default, we kind of are the weed podcast. You know? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. So in like, I guess the near future, how do you see like cannabis culture and entertainment kind of changing? Do you, do you see it becoming more mainstream? I would think so. I mean, common sense would lead me in that direction, but what I feel right now is not that. Mm -hmm. I feel like things are getting like more censored and more restricted. I agree. And I have to like on each platform, it's like more ridiculous, like and inconsistent, which mm -hmm. is really frustrating. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think when everything does officially go like federally legal or whatever, whenever that happens, that's going to, that's going to be what actually does it. Maybe. I didn't think when I was like, 
playing fucking cat and mouse with these cops over these nickel bags and going to getting them fucking tickets and going in and uh-huh. being all like, I never thought like 20 years from now, I'd still be like kind of dealing with this shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is cool that here you can go are. back to New York and it's all legal and stuff. There's obviously progress, but it's goofy. Imagine if your favorite rapper had to think about all this nonsense before they went and recorded their album. What can I name the titles? What can the cover art be? What can my lyrics be? Well, like, that's yeah. the opposite of being creative. Yeah. And we crank out episodes every week, as you know. It's like, it's not easy to do to begin with. So to be walking on eggshells the whole time is annoying, but we're sick of complaining about it. So that's why we just start our own thing. Yep. Just got to lock in and, and hope for the best, you know? I mean, I, I think it's just, I think it's best to be optimistic, you know? Overall, will things get better? Maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, hopefully one day, maybe there will be like a, just a wave of people who are just like, yo, we're going to make this shit chill, you know, on YouTube, all of a sudden we're monetized. Yeah, Imagine that. It'd be great. Dude. It'd be beautiful. Oh, we'd ads on YouTube. We'd be way further if we were monetized on YouTube just by building out our team and knowing we could count on it. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. yeah, you know, it's whatever. I think they're going to be on the wrong side of history with everybody like, so like, uh, pronouns and everybody being so sensitive. People that interface well with cannabis are going to be, it's not going to be cool to discriminate against us soon. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be on the other side of this and it's going to be all stupid. Like, just like I could go back to Lackawanna now, the same people that would arrest you and treat you like a killer, put you in prison, jail over it. Now it's all good. Mm -hmm. Just because somebody else said it was all good now. So stupid. It's like, that's what frustrates me. Change the game, man. (laughs) Change the game. We need change. Yeah. So. On a lighter note, what advice would you give to any like younger starting out creators who, who want to kind of get into what you're doing? Really identify what you're passionate about, if you can, what you're good at, where you can add value to people. That's like the gray area where, that you want to start at. It's as simple as like, I like music, I like comedy, I like sports. I kind of just went off in that direction. You got to be comfortable. like. I don't have anything yet. I'm working with nothing in front of me. It's going to be like that for a while. But yeah. it's that faith that something is going to happen eventually if I keep pushing that no matter what direction you take it in is going to get you somewhere, you know? And it's being able to add on skills that you can serve yourself with, but then also you got to have that entrepreneurial spirit that allows you to go out there and leverage those skills to get hired by people. Mm-hmm. And that's been a give and take. Like even when I was doing music, I would trade my engineer graphics for studio time or I would, I've always leveraged my other stuff to try to get what I want. Like yeah. to be able to leverage something to give value to somebody when you're trying to get something is completely different than just trying to get something, you know? So to have skills in the digital space, whatever it be, I mean, this is a way more digital world now than when I started, you know? And I don't think AI is really going to change it. I think AI is going to be a tool. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. AI is going to, I think the only thing that's going to change is the workflow for people who are, you know, behind the scenes creating exactly. content. Exactly. It's faster know? and easier yep. a little bit, but yep. you still need to know what you're doing. You mm-hmm. still need to know the fundamentals of what is, why things need to be the way they need to be for, in order for them to work. Mm-hmm. You know, AI isn't going to be able to do that in a very long time. AI is not going to be editing full length videos anytime soon. I don't feel oh, like not, the, yeah. it can't have the presence of what to keep, what to take out the timing, all that. Type. We're not there. Like these jobs are still going to be here for a while. And to be able to run a full operation like this usually takes a lot of people, mm-hmm. you know? So it's just, you got to start with whatever you're inclined towards. Once you kind of evaluate that, what am I, passionate about where do my natural talents maybe lie i wasn't a great designer off bat like i mean i was okay like you just kind of go you learn like how i approach the camera i was Mm -hmm. like okay i have this graphic design degree i understand everything about graphics i have no idea how to use a camera that's a huge fundamental aspect of graphic design massive (laughs) so i was like i need to i'm gonna invest in another course i'm gonna study for like three or four months psychotically do all this research on how do you use the equipment, what it all means, and then what equipment's out there, and then I'm gonna invest in myself. Okay. And pull the Band-Aid off and just get what I need and, then, and just do it. And in, that, in doing that, 
I mean, I just was able to completely level up my whole life. Had I not done that and been like, I'm good. I'm working with Rogan and Theo. Like, I'm fine. Like, had I not done that, it, life would be completely different. So it's like, even if it's kind of scary or like, I don't know if it's going to be worth it to invest my time. God, I'm going to have to invest what? Five, 10,000 in a gear? Like super scary. How am I going to do that? Did you sign up for this or not? Yeah. Because I signed yep. up when I got out of high school and looked around. That's when I signed. I signed. I signed over weekends. I signed over chill time. Madden. I signed over all that because I want to be chilling when I'm 50, for real chilling. That's that's. It's all like that's the difference in people. I feel like. Yeah, I feel that for sure. I um I always had a hard time working like uh, regular jobs. I could never like take being told what to do for like eight hours a day very yeah. well you know i just like wouldn't listen i'd be like all right i'm gonna go chain smoke fucking marlboro <laughs> you know yeah i feel that <laughs> I, that was like my most depressed times when i was working like cubicle jobs i used to get really super super anxious and frustrated and uh -huh. all that but i use that as motivation now i think about it all the time yep yeah yeah me too i think about that and i'm like damn i gotta grind harder gotta drop that video today i can't go back you know yeah, and this one collection agency <laughs> i used to work at they were so bad with the drugs in there. The mm -hmm. police did a sting because oh. every two hours they'd get a break. Everybody go out in the parking lot into the cars and do their drugs. Apparently <laughs> Damn. they had hotels next to the, it was right across the street from the airport. They had hotels. They had cops in the hotels. Oh, cameras and stuff. Did a whole nah. sting on the place. Yeah. <laughs> a sting on all the fiends, all the workers. Yeah. Operation fiend worker. That's Holy how it is. Shit. Every two hours out there huddled in, in, the, sm in the snow with <laughs> cigarettes, the Tim Hortons with the coffee. Oh, I can't. Oh, you ever stay in that hotel? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sounds like a nice vacation spot. Bro. It is. Kind of, it was right by like, I tried to propose to April at the Niagara Falls Marriott mm -hmm. and her aunt booked it for me. And it turned, it was a hotel right in this area that I'm talking about by the airport, okay. which isn't even Niagara Falls. Yeah. I was <laughs> they gonna just say, call is it the that. airport that close to Niagara Falls? No, like, it was yeah. just a regular hotel. <laughs> so I just proposed that April literally in the restaurant of some regular ass Marriott that I thought was going to be like the Niagara Falls. Hey, you know what? That's, that's real though. That's, yeah, that's we got love. It done. You know, if she says yes in the restaurant of the regular Marriott. Right. Then you can go to the nice Marriott by the real Niagara Falls. We got our car repoed two days after we got married. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> shit. How that like, how behind were you? How soon did they? Only like a month or two. Oh, it was fast. But like, damn, it was bad because uh, we thought we were going to like at least break even on our wedding. And uh -huh. we found out right after the wedding, like, oh, we didn't make any money on. We're way in the negative on this wedding. Oh. So that kind of ruined the whole wedding night, actually, mm -hmm. in the next morning. And then April left our keys. So like after the wedding, we went to this bar mm -hmm. and in the back of it was volleyball courts and we were like doing volleyball and stuff after the wedding. She had left the keys to our 300C there. So I went back the next day to get them. And uh, it was a completely full bar, completely like hundreds of people there, volleyball games mm -hmm. going. And I'm trying to find these keys, can't find them. Uh, so then I try to get, I have to get the car towed. Mm -hmm. So uh, while they're trying to co tow the car, the alarm starts going off. So the alarm's going off crazy now. I'm going back around asking everybody in the bar if they found these keys, all this type of stuff. They end up having to rip my 300C out of its place, oh. drag it onto the uh, bed. Oh, and then they fucking it up. We're, we're staying at my mom. The, my dad had a studio in my mom's old house and when okay. we passed, we moved into it after a while. And, uh, we were up there. I had just came, he towed and dropped it off in my mom's garage. I couldn't close the door cause the alarm would start going back off. It was like 11 o'clock at night. We left the door open. It was this huge catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Lay down. Beep, beep, beep. Repo man comes <laughs> that night came that was couldn't even horrible yeah, took it that was that was one of the worst days of my life and waking up that next day was one of my low 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 points oh <laughs> that's brutal dude that's cooked yeah we figured it out though we got it back so we got my 300 c back you got it back yeah we got you it back catch up on the pavement yeah we figured it out and then nice. when we went to move out here we left we had to leave it 
Oh. And we were just going to like sell it. Mm -hmm. But April's dad said he'd drive it out here. As he was driving it out here, he got to the Rocky Mountains and blew out the engine. So we had only been out here like two weeks. We were in an Airbnb. And now we didn't have any money. We were broke even when we moved out here. We were on zero between what it took to get out here, the Airbnb. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't have jobs lined up. Wasn't really. We were just going with it. And then her dad blew out our engine. So now we had to rescue him out of Colorado. And then put a new engine in my 300C and take it from there. That's brutal. That is brutal. But we figured it out. Did the new engine run for a bit, though? A little bit, yeah. Hey! But I couldn't get the check engine light off, so I was driving it with, uh, without license plates for a minute, and it was stressing me out. Bro, I feel bad. <laughs> I, was, I was driving with plates that weren't registered to the car I was driving because I just needed to have plates on it, and yeah. I was terrified. I know that feeling. Yeah, super Sucks. stressful. Yeah. And you know, like when you get pulled over, they're not going to listen. Yeah. Like, no matter like, no, you don't understand. I've just spent so much money on this. Fucking, all care. I'm trying to do is get that check engine light off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you could literally be driving it to the shop. They don't give a shit. Yeah. But they don't, uh, they're a not, they're a non-factor in Orange County for real. Like in Buffalo, I used to get pulled over. It was a part of my life getting pulled over. Yeah. It was a regular part of life. Even when I wasn't doing anything wrong or sketchy, I just still had an alibi like no matter what now i haven't gotten pulled over since i lived here dude i haven't gotten pulled over since i moved here either but i've been here that long no but that's crazy yeah you you moved here in 2013 Mm -hmm. dude 11 years pull over free no not even close honestly congratulations that's (laughs) that's impressive i it used to be a real issue do you speed like is it like does it shock you that you haven't been pulled over you no i'm not shocked i'm pretty like i'll be whipping yeah <laughs> i take that little corolla and i fucking oh like yeah, yeah. Cart, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy it's time for my favorite well one of my favorite games that we're gonna play on the show we're gonna play a little would you rather okay so we got some uh some fun stuff here um oh boy i've done this before would you rather wow you got the big boy rip let's go i gotta get it Gotta match that. Let's go, Godcast. Woo! I'm bait. All right. Oh my God. So, would you rather eat 3,000 milligrams of edibles as one serving? Or smoke six blunts back to back. Six blunts all day. No problem. Nice. <laughs> 3,000 nice. yeah, is think, insane. No, you're right. Yeah, that's a very <laughs> lopsided question, bro. It's like whatever. I had a tweak for two and a half days or like just I, be stoned for the I day. ate 1,000 milligrams <laughs> uh, like a month ago. Mm-hmm. Kind of over the course of like 12 hours, I guess. Okay. And it was pretty sick. <laughs> you enjoyed it? Yeah, I never do that much. I did like 500 and 500, like at night and then again in the morning. It hadn't really worn off and it kind of kicked back on. Yeah. But I just, it was the only time I felt so goofy that I'm like, damn, everybody can tell I'm fucked up right now. Uh, I get silly (laughs) off the edibles. I feel that. Did you enjoy waking up and like still being high the next day though? I think it had worn off by the time I woke up. Oh, it did? Yeah. Okay. I got I got drunk that night too. Actually, I never got. Oh, all right, yeah, you, yeah. you drank it off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. Okay, <laughs> the next. Would you rather? Oh, this is a tough one. Would you rather give up dabs or flour? I barely ever dab, but I love dabs it. I was go. explaining before we started. I've rekindled my love mm-hmm. of dabbing, just because like. If I'm going to get some weed, I'm always going to get the flower. Like if it's going to be one or the other in my order, I'm not, I don't spend a, like a lot of money. I barely ever, now that I'm always at the warehouse and we have sponsors and stuff, like mm-hmm. I just kind of, just kind of give it to us and stuff. But when I get my hands on some hash, I do love it. But you know, uh, it, I would have to keep the flower. Flower is a good answer. That's probably what I picked too. I feel bad. I love hash. You know, there's probably going to be like some hash makers out there watching this. Like, fuck you, goblin. Fuck you, Marty. <laughs> Don't say that shit. I couldn't survive on hash alone. No. Oh, my God, dude. I mean, I wake up and just immediately take a nap right after. Like, yeah. take a dab and it's just like, all right, I'm going back to bed. Mm-hmm. Fuck that. I only got the little uh, little Carter, though. I don't have like a dab rig and stuff. So it's just like little guys. Mm-hmm. 
full dab rig would would that would ruin your life. You no. wake up immediately, you take a <laughs> fat ass dab off the terp slurper, and now it's over. <laughs> Some people do that though. I'm out there at the. Uh, this guy does that. <laughs> I'm out there early AM with the uh, one of these guys though. I'm hey. early bird. Bongs are the way, everybody. Listen, everyone's always talking about oh, smoke a joint, smoke a blunt. Fuck that. Hit a bong. Right. Yeah. You know? I do two little bowls at a time. Get out there with the hemp wick. A yep. Cup yep. of coffee. It's a little reset button. Dude, I'm telling you, I chill on my balcony sometimes. Bring the bong out. It's a vibe. Yeah. It's a vibe. The morning bong rips are chill. Oh, this is a, okay. Do you have, um, do you have any like nice glass or like expensive glass you would say? The only glass I have is I always break it. And mm-hmm. I've had this one particular piece for like two years now is our prism glass. The dope as usual modular. Oh, okay. You can unscrew it and mix and match the different stuff with it. So I've been rocking that since we put them out like two years ago. Oh, okay. I'm really super discreet with my shit too. Like I keep mine like hidden outside under a fucking tarp and like, I don't have stuff out. Well, this question might break your heart. <laughs> okay. Would you rather know how your most expensive piece, or I guess in this question, just that piece, will break or know uh, when it will break? Oh, uh, it's definitely going to break. It'll by month and year, but I not did. the day. It would break my heart more to know the day because I know it's going to be at my hands. So I'm probably why I'm cleaning it. So you, you would want to know how instead of when? Yeah, I wouldn't want to know when. I love this piece. This is my longest standing one I've ever had. Dude, if you knew how, you'd be tweaking, though. Like, you'd be, every time, like, what if it's cleaning it? Every time you go to clean oh, it, you're yeah, like, that's true. fuck. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. But I've definitely dinged it around, and I always, like, break them when I'm cleaning out the little pieces and stuff. Like, mm. I kind of got it down, although I keep it clean. Have you used No. Dude? Oh, is that the blue? The orange. Okay, it has like the uh, salt in the bottom. You got to shake it up, or no? There's not really salt in the bottom. No, oh, okay. it's just like a like a, a degreaser liquid, but you could put it in your bong and it makes it spotless. And you just run hot water through after. So like, I put it in my bong. Then I go pour it out in my bathtub. I just run hot water through Sick. for like a minute, and it's clean, spotless, nice. like brand new. I love that. There's such a difference when they're like fresh and clean mm-hmm. versus used. Mm-hmm. Rips completely different, dude. That's that's some game. You need to try it. It's on Amazon. I get the uh, baby bottle cleaner on mine. Unscrew it, hit it with the hose, get the cleaner going, some alcohol. Oh, the baby bottle cleaner is fire, though. <laughs> I fuck with that. Ooh, all right. I got another tough one. Would you rather smoke weed that makes you super paranoid or nauseous? Paranoid. Really? Oh, I hate being nauseous, yeah. I think I have Are a healthy level it? of paranoia just always. I think nauseous, you could just puke it off, though, no? Like, real quick, like, just go yak. But mm. paranoid, I mean, you might be tweaking for a while, no? Yeah. I haven't had, I haven't had that happen in a long time. But I had a stretch where I felt like it was happening a lot mm-hmm. when I lived in Buffalo. It's probably just from shitty dog shit weed. But I, I, I really hate it. being <laughs> nauseous. Yeah, I, I hate it, too. <laughs> Especially, like... You ever had some like really terrible hangovers where you're just like, you wake up the next day and you're just cooked. You like, your stomach is done. I think I've only ever had one real hangover. Really? It was at my going whole away life? party. Yeah, I never have gotten real hangover. I'll get up and start cleaning and shit after I drink. I don't drink that much though. Wow. I know. I'm, especially being from like an alcoholic town. Yeah. That's impressive. I, it's remarkable. I don't know. Yeah, wow. not really too much. I'm a hangover. I had like the time I had it, I had like bronchitis and shit. I had to go to the. Oh, okay. So that <laughs> yeah. one was brutal. <laughs> that, that one was probably worst. sucked. Like two days before ass. we moved here, they had me. I did a keg stand for the first time, only time in my life, uh, like two days before we moved here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then you're like, all right, take the trip to California. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, this is a brutal question. Josefo made this tough, dude. Would you rather have every strain taste like trash juice? Or Oof. never have clean bong water. <coughs> okay. Thus, thus making everything taste like trash juice, no? I guess in effect, <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I'm particular about the water now. I really am. 
I smoked but. trash weed for about 10 years before I moved here. Mm-hmm. I got. I can't have nasty water. I think I would have to clean the water out, even if the weed tastes like shit. You could just smoke out of other, you know, like a joint or a blunt, though. Okay. I don't like. I. I really only. I'm such a ninja a with it. Man. Yeah. Fuck, dude. All right. Well, <laughs> trash shoes. It is every single day for the rest of your life. <laughs> That's tough. Oh, that'd be so shit. Like, imagine like. In your dream, you just get approached by like some spirit. He's just like, yeah. He just pops that question to you. Curses you with trash shoes. Yeah. I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Dude, there's so many other things, bro. Like, why do you fuck with my weed? Right. <laughs> oh, okay. This is another tough one. Would you rather give up your favorite food or give up weed? Favorite food. Fuck yeah. I don't really have it. I'm not into food all like that. I'm like, I, I get it over with. You, do, you just kind of eat whatever? Like, yeah, I'm down. a scavenger. Okay, <laughs> scavenger is a crazy way. To put it. <laughs> yeah, I just graze around like I don't waste any time cooking or anything. <laughs> I live, I eat like a twelve-year-old basically. I so you want what? What's your like favorite dishes to eat? Like, probably a nice lasagna or a nice uh, uh, rice with the cheddar broccoli. Fire, fire. April can cook, you know, she makes Hell actual yeah. good stuff. I'm like, I max out at a good quesadilla. That's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely like, like weird food things that you eat. I feel like everyone has some like unconventional, intentionally. But you said you eat like a 12 year old. I do. I literally like peanut butter and jelly quesadillas. Okay. Yeah. Like, so- <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. That's a valid diet. Yeah. That's a- right. <laughs> that's Protein shakes valid. if I'm like working out, but. You know, I do like basic stuff. Really, it's like couldn't be more basic, bro. I always got a fucking. I'm always supposed to mix the protein stuff with the milk, but I um, I never have milk. I just do it with the water. Oh, it's brutal. It's brutal. I do mine with almond milk. It's basically water. Almond milk is good, bro. That shit is thick yeah. too. It's mm. like it's weird. Yeah, I oh that's that's what I eat. Okay, that, that's a weird thing. I eat this certain kind of honey. Valley Nature Valley granola with almond milk and peanut butter all day, bro. That sounds kind of good, honestly. Yeah, the cinnamon granola, like, bro, heavy. what? That sounds fire. Yeah, that's not weird. <laughs> sounds good, bro. I'd eat that shit. Holy hell, cinnamon granola. Oh, fuck, you that's money. Scoop of the that's peanut money. butter, scoop of the granola. Oh, <laughs> now we're talking, dude. That sounds fire. All right, we got another one. Do you have a fear of heights? I have a healthy fear, I would say. Okay. I hate planes. Would you rather set... Uh, I mean, fuck airplanes. Dude, have you seen the, the Boeing stuff yeah, recently? Yeah, yeah, so you, I, you made me hate them even more. Listen, always fly on an Airbus. Yep. Like, if you value your life... I have that on ingrained Airbus. in yep. my mind now, yep. yeah. But now I saw, I saw a report on the news. Everyone's starting to do that. Everyone's tapped in. They stole my swag, dude. So, like... I hope you get credit for that. Because you were saying that long I've before all the controversy. I've been this, man. Yeah. You know, I, I really have. But it's okay. You know, they can steal my style. Like, yeah. It's whatever. I just, I saw this coming. <laughs> I saw this coming. Yeah. I, I, I avoid heights and flying at all costs. Dude, we have to fly to Boston soon. I'm terrified. Mm. Oh, yeah. You fly. Josefo flies to Mexico tomorrow on a Boeing. So if the, <laughs> if the gobcast suddenly ends, it's because he didn't make it to mexico or from mexico so are you do you fly back on a boeing oh why would you do that? bro a double whammy <laughs> holy shit first one's gonna lose a wheel second one's gonna lose a wing oh fuck no he'll, he'll, <laughs> be, good. he'll be good you got the same wait what airline oh okay delta you're fine you're fine it's united and like american that are tweaking right now you're good yeah you're vibing i study this oh it's by airline um somewhat yeah because it's it's maintenance issues both with the planes but also the airline like yeah some airlines like pick certain planes that are extra reliable like delta does mm-hmm. that's why their flights cost so much more. i hate how airports just feel like oh there's this thing now oh you you don't have a flight today sorry you got to just stay over and figure it out cancel tomorrow cancel you out of nowhere april had to stay an extra like three days in buffalo both times she went back there like that's just normal now like sorry it's nuts right flight now. isn't today crazy right now i am so glad that i moved out here because i used to fly out here every month yeah 
in today's flying economy, I would have been upside down in the ocean right now on a missing airplane. All right. Uh. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, would you rather feel itchy or sticky after smoking? This is an interesting question. Sticky. Yeah, sticky, yeah. That's a common one, I that'd feel be, like. That'd be a good sign. Itchy sucks, dude. Yeah, imagine you're itching. You're yeah. like, what the fuck? You start itching so hard, like you're bleeding and shit. You're like, it's like one of the movies. Like, ah. <laughs> Fucking alien comes out of you. God, that'd be crazy. Yeah. Fuck. So, yeah, mm-hmm. sticky for sure. That's an easy one, in my opinion. The last one of the would you rathers. Would you rather drop and spill a full grinder on the ground? Furious rage. Painful, I know, right? Or have weed to smoke, but no lighter anywhere at all? More rage. <laughs> I'd, okay. I'd finagle the hemp wick off the stove. Or uh, it's easier. I mean, are we talking, did I drop the weed in the snow? Did I drop it that, in something I can't pick it up from? It's just kind of gross to pick it up, let's say. Like, gotcha. you know, you dropped it on the carpet and there's some like dog hair on that shit and like kids have been playing on yeah. there and there's some Cheetos in it. And it's ground up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> I'd rather go get a new lighter probably. I'd get fucking <laughs> furious. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, yeah. It is a banger one. That's a tough one. <laughs> I don't know. I spill my grinder kind of often, honestly. Yeah, I get, I get, I hate fucking spilling weed. Bro, I do it all the time. Oh, we got a fun segment here. This is one of my favorite segments here. So we went on Google and we looked you up and we found the most commonly searched questions about (laughs) you. And we're going to ask them. So now no one ever has to Google them. That's interesting. Yeah. How do you, uh, I didn't know you could do that. When you type in your name, it just has to Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yep. Um, so let's see what we've got. The most asked <laughs> questions about Marty. We do this with every guest and you got some good ones. So number one, what does Marty do for a living? Looking at it. <laughs> These days. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. I love no, that. Most, most of my day is video editing, a psychotic amount of video editing that kicks mm-hmm. off. It's about 12 hours a day. And that's what it's been for a couple of years now. But also, like, this past week's been super fun. Like, for instance, two weeks ago, we started the whole brand identity for our new rolling papers that are coming out. Oh, that's sick. So, just started from scratch. Mm-hmm. I hadn't done that in a really long time. It was really fun. The whole logo set, all the, everything associated with the new brand identity. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then this week, we did the catalog layout for Zoomy. So, like, it's, a, it's graphic design also, but a completely different type of graphic design. And we just like went super hard on that for the past week, developing all these images for the catalog. And, you know, like, so it can, it can vary, but yeah, usually I'm editing the podcast, editing Dope Zola videos, making thumbnails, making clips, making websites, uh, making pitch decks. I spend a huge amount of my time making like documents Mm -hmm. for sponsors and people behind the scenes of the show and guests and stuff like that. That's a huge part of the course that, Nobody really teaches you how to pitch yourself, yep. how to pitch an idea, how to come at somebody to try to get a deal done. It's going to be a big part of it because it's huge. It's the only way the show works. Damn. We're able to go get new sponsors. That's, that's a lot of work. That's a crazy amount of work. Yeah. For everyone out there, I mean, what does Marty do for a living? He's just that guy. <laughs> just the way to put it, I guess. Cranking away. Just that fucking dude, you know? But yeah, it's not, it's no, you know, I gotta, there's way, there's, I'm not where I want to be. That's for sure. I don't want to be working this crazy forever. Like Mm -hmm. the goal is more time, like more of like not having to get stuff done. I'm chasing this Mm -hmm. carrot. Like, but that's how you build your family and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. For sure. But I still get that in a lot. Like hell heavy. As soon as that day, as soon as the work day is done, it kind of starts off. I'm like going to practice, going to games. Vibing. Yeah. You were talking about you got a new pool too, huh? Yeah. Dude. How like what what's like what's it like? I just like looking at it to be honest. Like to me it kind of feels like I made it in a certain aspect of being able to look and see a sick backyard. Just cuz that it just looks so sick. 
I don't even like swimming. I mean, it's mainly for the kids. They like swimming. Mm -hmm. But it just looks like, wow, we this was a just a dirt patch. It's like, I'm just super proud of it and that it, we got it done within a year or two. And it's basically all done now. It was this Sick massive project. And it's just something I'm really proud of. Just kind of chill back there. We got the gazebo back there now and the waterfall going and butterflies flying around and the kids are playing. So Damn, cool. the butterflies in there <laughs> yeah. too? Yeah. That's Fire. Hey, that's bougie. Yeah. That's we, bougie. We found a tombstone uh, in the backyard when we, when we were excavating. Uh -huh. We found a stray tombstone, so we thought that it was a burial you, yard for a brief moment. Did you find any bones? No, but there was a moment where I was with the diggers, and they had just found it, and they're like, All right, we got to, like, we went, like, six feet down over here, over there. My neighbor's a sheriff, mm -hmm. and he ended up figuring out what happened. What happened? That it was the previous people that had lived there. Uh, like, her dad died, and then when her mom died, they got new headstones, and she put the dad's old headstone in the backyard and buried it. Or something. So I'm like, whatever. Okay. I guess. Like, yeah, you have right. the sheriff call like, you. That's a great story. <laughs> but... As long as there wasn't a body back there, I was all Damn, there. what if, like, <laughs> that's not true and there's a body in there? That's crazy. There, it got completely excavated. CSI. Yeah. Oh. I know. But I, I was considering all this, like, <clears throat> what would I do if there is a body? Like, what do you, what happens then? Like, do I... I mean... Is that too creepy to... I'm, like... Do you I file get an insurance out. claim for the lost value of the house? <laughs> like, what the fuck... Oh. <laughs> My luxury backyard now has this now has ghost. A, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's actually a grave with a body in it, <laughs> nine feet under my pool, guys. Parallel with the deep end. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. That, that was interesting. That's cooked. <laughs> All right. So the next question on Google, uh, when was Marty born? August 25th, 1986, Buffalo General. Nice. August. Uh, what, um, what is that? What a, like, zodiac sign does that make you? I know. Virgo, I think. I don't okay. know. About I don't know. Thing. Yeah. I don't know anything about what that means either, but people, you know, someone's going to be in the comments like, oh, wow, he's a whatever. That explains a lot. Every time someone says the birthday, someone always I says don't know. that. I'm questioning if that even is what it is. No, I don't know. I think. I don't, I don't know. know either. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I have no clue what August is. Um, damn, actually, you said August 25th? Yeah. I have, you have the same exact birthday as my homie Kyle. Nice. That's funny as hell. That's fire. I'll have a big party one day. Um, Sick. What did Marty study? I guess we kind of already went over that. Well, I dropped out of school the first time just studying nothing. But then when I went back, like, probably... Yeah. Uh, let's get this right. So four or five years later which mm -hmm. i think is like a smarter decision overall because you're like Definitely. kind of know what you want to do at that point it was through for graphic design through full cell online so full sale yeah full i've sale. seen the commercials yeah full sale is great you can go and be on campus there it's like a giant studio school uh in orlando or a bunch of their programs are online so they shipped me out a macbook mm -hmm. up front and that changed my life damn to start like to start the courses, they ship you a MacBook Pro. That's awesome. With all the stuff loaded That's on crazy. It. And that I mean, I shot a music video like the next day. <laughs> like Damn. I was so geeked to have this MacBook. But then it's 32 months. Every month is a different course. A month of this, a month of that, a month, no breaks. So it's like four years straight through with no breaks, basically. Wow. So it takes two and a half years. Uh, and most people don't finish it. It's really hard to do an online college course. Yeah, that's tough as hell. They you told gotta, me when I finished it, most people don't finish this. You have to have a lot of like self-discipline. Yes, because you're paying to do another job. You're taking on a uh, like workload of another job, basically, mm -hmm. while you're working a job for your life. Yep. But it was, it was, it was valuable in a lot of ways, I feel like. Damn. Like, uh, it was, I feel like... A lot of my experience is almost like some of the people I've worked for mm -hmm. were as valuable as going through college, like learning from a guy that I work for and like his little ways that he thought. And like, I think back now more to him than I do to the 32 months in school. For, you know what I mean? Like, 
yep. in my day to day. But it's something that I'm really proud of. And would I recommend it? I don't really know because I also feel like it was kind of limited. I came out of, I have a graphic design degree and didn't know how to use a camera. Mm. I for sure should have known how to use a camera. Definitely. <laughs> it's a fundamental part of photos, which is the basics of like, I would have 100%. did it differently. Mm -hmm. So like I'm taking a lot of things. I'm taking all my, like when I make my course, all my freelance career into consideration mm -hmm. up through like production of a full show and like all the different various aspects of that. And then I'm going to be just live streaming my projects. I want to be like fire every, whatever I'm working on. I'm just live streaming, thinking, thinking out loud. Cause I feel like knowing how to think is the most important thing. Definitely. And you only get that from experience. You can school yourself up, but then it's going to be no matter what it is. Most people in most categories of things it takes like 10 years to get great at something. I feel like, yep. That's what most, that's like a rule of thumb. I think, I don't know, but if you apply yourself and really get after it, you should be in a vastly different position than you were when you started within that time frame. That's good advice. That's good advice. So what, what camera does Marty use is the next question on the list. Ooh, that's a good one. Right now I'm rocking the Sony a seven four. Nice. That's a good camera. Yeah. I love it. And I got bumped up from the Sony a seven three when I got that stolen. Oh, I stupidly got all my gear stolen. How'd that happen? leaving the set of a commercial. I was on set all day, probably back to back days. It gets mm -hmm. nutty when I got to go film because yep. it's like, you're out way out here by 6 a.m., way out yep. there the next day, the next day. And then I'm still got all the podcast stuff going. So it was like the end of one of those stretches mm -hmm. and it was the end of the day. And like, you're supposed to, I was rushing. It's kind of mm -hmm. my point. Like you're supposed to take a shuttle from the set to where the cars are parked. I was like, I dipped up. I'm like, just hustle walked because I was going to meet Thomas and Rosie in April for the system of a down corn concert. Mm. So I'm like rushing. I walk like a mile with all my gear, put it down behind my car, get I'm like changing my shirt, calling April to coordinate. And I end up leaving my Pelican. I don't put it in the trunk oh. and I leave it in the parking lot. Oh, so then That's, I, oh. I end up not realizing it till we get back late that night. I fly back out there at like five in the morning the next day and it's gone. No. So I lost my Sony a7 III, my Ninja that goes with it, my Sony a6000, my $2,500 Zeiss 50 no. millimeter lens, my wide angle lens. I lost everything uh, that I had like, you know. Brutal. Yeah. And, uh, but so then I bounced back with just, you know, one camera, one lens. So I got the a7 IV, which I'm really happy with. The main difference from the a7 III is I can record longer than 30 minutes with it, which is huge. And then I got a uh, G Master 24 to 105 lens, uh, which gives me really good focal length out of what I can go wide or I can zoom in. So when mm -hmm. I'm on the commercial sets, I need to be able to zoom in, but I also need to be able to go kind of wide. So it's like yep. an all purpose lens, but Fire. I can't get really shallow depth of field of it with it. It's only an F4 in comparison. Like, you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of can't, can't get somewhat. quite so artistic with it. The depth of field isn't so shallow as my lens that I got stolen. And okay. It hurts me every day. I got, I'm going to get it back. Uh, so that's what I'm rocking right now. And, um, you know, I really love it. I like Sony because it's way less expensive than Canon. I just, I love the look of it when they pair my footage in with the cameras that they use on set are hundreds of thousands of dollars set yep. up. And when they splice in my footage on like social media videos and stuff, it really makes no real difference. You really can't tell. Mm -hmm. You know how to shoot in a flat profile and all that. So it's up there. I mean, never before has there been a time where like you can go afford a camera setup that could rival what they're using to film on Netflix. Yeah, literally, uh, as long as you're able to film in like, you know, 4K 60, you can get some shit cracking. Yeah. You and know? you know what you're doing. And then it's just like you learn those skills and then how can I get creative with it? 100%. The final question on the Google question list. This is cool. It's a good idea. How tall is Marty? Every bit of 6'2". Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. April's always trying to play me like I'm not. I'm 6'2". No, claim that <laughs> shit, bro. Don't let her talk you out of that. No, you're 6'2". Yeah. Might even be 6'2 and a half. Right. I'm, yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I might still be growing. Mm -hmm. When's the last time you measured? Right. Exactly. I don't even know. Exactly. Yeah, you could have grown. You could have grown. You could be 6'3 by now. 
So it's been a good year. April shouldn't talk shit about that. I've or been nothing. stretching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you get your stretches in every morning, you'll grow at least like one to two inches over your life. You know, you have You're to. not gonna shrink. It's math, bro. It's like you stretch your muscles every day. Right. Naturally, they're just longer. That's just how it fucking goes. <laughs> <man>. That's <laughs> <laughs> Neither of my parents were tall. I feel like I kind of just willed myself. Really? Dude, mine was the opposite. So my dad's side of the family was super tall. Like even my aunt on my dad's side was like 6'2", right? Mm. Everyone else was like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, you know? Um, and I was like, damn, I, you know, I hope I grow up to be tall. And I, I did not grow up to be very tall. I got my mom's side of the family. Mm. We're all like around my height. Just roll the dice. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> I got the uh, I got the short roll on that one, that particular one. But mm-hmm. It is what it is. But what a banger podcast today! Gobcast episode five. Marty, thank you so much for coming on today. This, this is really awesome. a fun one. I had a lot of fun. I appreciate thank you, you for having me. Thank you. Had bro. my first Baja. Yup, yup. You enjoyed it. Pull it up. Pull it up. That shit is money. I did. Oh man. Nice coffee for me, Osafo. I appreciate everything. This was fun. Thank you guys. Appreciate everybody watching. I'm so happy I could put someone on to Baja Blast. Like, I don't think I've ever actually, like, put someone on to Baja Blast for the first time. That was cool. What an exciting moment. That. I hope you, you get this again in your lifetime. Just one day. <laughs> one day. Maybe in, like, 30 years, you'll just be like, Baja Blast. Topcast episode five. No, you I'm know? never not just, going through again, not thinking about this. I'll put my kids on. 100%. There. 100%. Oh, your kid's going to love it, dude. <laughs> I'm telling you, when I was younger, that shit was, like, crack. You know, they're going to ask for it every other day, though. Like they're gonna be tweaking off it, dude. They, I think they they cut it a little bit now. It's not the same flavor. Gotcha. Yeah, it's, I just got my son off Prime. So. Oh, <laughs> are they really, dude? We gotta make a drink, dude. How, can we get pine? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get fucking pine going. Oh, infused drinks, pine. Oh shit, you're right. I can't talk about that, can I? <laughs> Why'd you whisper that then? <laughs> okay, all right. Either way. Um, yeah, this is a banger today. Thank you for coming on, and thank you all for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, to the Gobcast episode five. Don't forget about the only guest, $50 ounces, and check out some of our exotic strains, my favorite being the Jealousy, which right now is going for the low, cheaper than all the other of high tier strain so make sure you go check them out make sure you drop a sub drop a like drop a comment share your thoughts on this and marty where can people find you at marty made on instagram if you want to know more about the course or anything i got going on just follow there and i'll be dropping updates fire fire thank you all for tuning in drop a like see you on the next one doses that was a good one Shit. That was yeah. Fun. yeah that was a fun one bro thank you so much for coming yeah. Damn, I couldn't tell if that was an hour or four hours. I don't know. How long was that? <laughs> Two hours. Nice.